Hello everybody, welcome back to MTG The Stack. My name is Trigger, and for today's EDH slash Commander gameplay video, I'm bringing you one of the other three, one of the other four games that we played on that Strixhaven recording night. If you saw the big Strixhaven release video a couple weeks ago, you would have saw Aiden's Witherbloom deck just absolutely obliterate the table with the Bullets of Citadel combo. But today we have a different game for you. Maybe, maybe not a different result, but You'll see. Um, you might notice behind me that we have a whole new setup going on here, as far as you're aware. And we're going to be trying something different with today's. Sundays when I'm recording this, and so the stream's going to be happening in a couple hours. Let me know in the comments below, this, this video comes out tomorrow, whether or not you know, there wasn't any like encoding errors or whatever. Or let me know in the comments below if I'm already Adrian. But with that said, as always, if you like the show or anything else we're doing over here on YouTube, liking, sharing, and subscribing helps us out immensely. If you like our content and don't mind taking that extra step, you can always support us over on Patreon at MTG The Stack. Comment down below any of your thoughts or feelings, and we hope you enjoy the show. In today's EDH slash Commander gameplay video, we have the dragons returning from the big Strixhaven release event. This is from the same recording session, so everyone's rocking the same decks as before. For example, Guy is still on Quandrix, the blue-green plus one plus one counter token strategy, trying to overwhelm the board with massive creature advantage as well as interact with his opponents with tempo play and counter spells. His opening hand includes a Eureka Moment, a Thassa's Oracle, a Toski Bear of Secrets, a Rishka Prima Renegade, a Lanwar Elves, a Rhymewood Falls, and Rejuvenating Springs. And then Calvin's back, rocking his Black White Shadrick Silver Quill Graveyard Matters deck that tries to pivot between being a Graveyard Matters combo deck as well as a creature token strategy. His opening hand includes an Opposition Agent, a Rager and Capital Eos, a Scheming Symmetry, a Soul Ring, a Swamp, a Vault of Champion, and a Command Tower. And then Aiden's here, ready to abuse of his Witherbloom midrange strategy, trying to pivot between being a graveyard strategy as well as the traditional ramp midrange effects you can see out of green black slash Aiden. His opening hand includes a Nisa who shakes the world, a Whip of Erebos, a Vito Thorn of the Dusk Rose, a Blood Artist, a Command Tower, a Forest, and a Forest. And then there's Adrian, still rocking Galzeth Prismari, but back before it evolved into the CEDH Stacks deck you might have seen on our more recent CEDH Commander gameplay videos, or our recent livestream. His opening hand includes a Serum Visions, a Lightning Greaves, an Expansion Explosion, a Frostbolt Snarl, a Fiery Islet, a Mountain, and an Island. It's the, the new card game. The new card this, game. This will forever be a new the car- spiciest card game. A very spicy card game for the rotation. Just show me the money. This is the why possibilities. We keep, this is why we keep Calvin around. Cause I- Shenanigans. Listen. One, two, three, flip. Ooh. It's Guy Ooh. and he's a thrill of possibilities. How thrilling. This Round one, Guy is on the play. So he'll open the game with the rejuvenating springs followed by a Lenoir Elves passing the turn. After that, Calvin's gonna draw, and he's gonna drop a command tower, followed by a soul ring, passing his turn. Then Aiden will draw and take his turn, dropping a command tower, and then Adrian's gonna go, where he's gonna draw, drop a frost boil snarl, revealing a basic island from his hand, and then he's gonna cast Serum Visions, where he's gonna draw a card, and then scry one to the top and one to the bottom of his library. Round two, Guy is gonna draw, and then he's gonna drop a basic forest before casting the creature Rishkar, Prima Renegade, which will enter the battlefield and put a plus one plus one counter on it and the elf from before. He'll then pass the turn. Calvin's turn, he'll draw, he'll drop a Vault of Champions, and then he's gonna tap his Soul Ring in order to cast a Talisman of Hierarchy before tapping out in order to cast Ranger Captain of Eos, which will enter the battlefield, trigger, and search him up a Stitcher Supplier, adding it to his hand. He'll then pass the turn. On Aiden's turn, he's gonna draw, drop a basic forest, and then he's gonna tap out in order to cast a Blood Artist, ending his turn. And then on Adrian's turn, he'll untap, draw, drop that basic island from before, and then tap it to cast a soul ring, followed by tapping the soul ring in order to cast a lightning greaves. He'll then pass the turn. Round three, Guy is gonna untap, draw, drop a basic forest, 
and then he's going to cast Toski, Bearer of Secrets, before heading into combat and attacking Adrian for 3 damage. This triggers Trosky, drawing Gaia card, and then he's going to pass a turn. Are you a paradoxical deck or no? No, I am not okay. a paradoxical deck. No, okay. no. I am a Dramatic Scepter deck. Okay. Okay, that means there, there is that. No, That's I'm about to good ass all combo. over you guys. Jeez. Be nice. What? Have you guys heard of the phrase, favorite play? Yeah. All right, let's do it. See favorite it. play. First, we're going to do it as safe as humanly possible. Sacrifice Ranger Captain of Eos. Your opponents can't cast non-creature spells this turn. Trigger blood. I didn't trigger blood. Trigger blood. Beep. I don't know. Uh oh. No, uh, uh, okay. No. No. You're not doing it already. No. Oh. Oh. Who's tutoring? Yeah. Us two? Us two? Uh, I'm tutoring. Oh my god. Out of your deck. You Calvin immediately went for Adrian's Grafdigger's Cage, but after some deliberation, Calvin decided to take Aiden's Incarnation Technique, exiling them both forever. Uh, Calvin will then cast a Stitcher Supplier, milling three cards from the top of his library, including Arcane Signet, Sadisi, and Restoration Specialist. He'll then pass the turn. Aiden's gonna untap, draw, drop a basic forest, and then he's gonna cast Veto, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, before passing the turn. Adrian's turn, he's gonna untap, draw, drop a basic mountain, and then he's gonna tap four mana in order to cast his commander, Galazeth Prismari which will enter the battlefield and make him a treasure token. He'll then equip the Lightning Greaves to his Galazeth, and then he'll simply pass the turn. Round 4, Guy's gonna untap, draw, and then move straight into combat, where he's gonna throw all of his creatures at Aiden. Aiden's not gonna block, so he's gonna take a total of 6 damage, and Trotsky is gonna trigger 3 times, drawing Guy 3 cards. I gotta do something about Calvin. I'm, wor I'm worried about both of them. If you do something to Guy, I'll do something to Calvin right now. All right, fair. I'm going to be the good guy here, believe it or not. Oh, shit. All right. Win my favor. I'll play Scavenger Goose. Mm, um, I like you it. You are no longer the good guy to me. <laughs> Fuck you. I like Scavenger Goose. I don't like you. After the ooze, Guy's going to move to his end step. Before he can, Adrian's going to tap three mana in order to cast Prismari Command, dealing two damage to Calvin's opposition agent and destroying his soul ring. This is going to end Guy's turn. Calvin's gonna untap, draw, misses land drop, and he's gonna cast Pawn of Ulamog, ending his turn. You scared of that ooze? Uh, yeah, I am scared <laughs> of that ooze. I would be. I don't I know. Hey, Iden, if you deal for ooze, I'll demonstrate on you. I'm the bad guy right now. Yep. I will give you a free I like spell. That. I like that. Incredible. Essence, Essence Warden. Warden resolves. Should I kill it now? This is the time to kill it. Do you time need to kill Skews? Yeah, dude, I am a graveyard the, deck. The Scooze hoses both of us. I don't need to quite yet, but you know, I might as well. The I reason why he has to do it now okay. is, uh... It's he, as bad as Cage. He, he, oh, oh, he oh, is oh. invested in that Scooze staying alive. I sure am. I'll and it. he's tapped out, more yeah. or less. Dickhead. Oh, well, I can't stop that, but yeah. In response, Guy's gonna activate his Scavenging Ooze twice. The first time he's gonna exile Calvin's Sadisi, Undead Vizier, and the second time Guy's gonna exile Calvin's Ranger Captain of Eos. This is gonna gain Guy 2 life and technically put some counters on Scavenging Ooze, but then the Abrupt Decay resolves, destroying it. This does kill a creature, which does trigger Blood Artist, and Aiden's gonna point the trigger at Guy, draining Guy for 1 and gaining Aiden 1 which incidentally triggers Veto, which he'll then point another damage at Guy. This is going to end Aiden's turn. Adrian's going to untap, draw, drop a fiery eyelet, and then he's going to tap his basic lands in order to cast a Howling Mind, followed by tapping his Lightning Greaves, Howling Mind, and Soul Ring in order to cast a Factor Fiction, revealing a Spell Swindle, Storm Kiln Artist, Shatter Skull Smashing, Museum Mortars, and a Training Center. Um, Guy... Man, I out. never get picked. Oh, right. That's because low-key, you're one of the most technical players here. Yeah. And I think you'll suss out the best piles the fastest. Well, the slowest, actually. I think you'll take longer, but you'll figure out the absolute best piles. Guy just kind of gets to the point. Sometimes I pass it to Aiden if he's drunk enough, because sometimes it'll just give me like a pile of one and four. Like this. That's exactly how I would have piled it, actually. Adrian's going to take the pile with the Mizium Mortars and the Shatter Skull Smashing, adding them to his hand and pitching the rest to his graveyard. He's then going to float a red and then cast a Dramatic Reversal. 
untapping all his non-land permanents, which is also now his mana. He'll then spend that mana in order to overload Mizia Mortars, wiping his opponent's board, save the Toski. This does have some death triggers though, including the Blood Artist, which the damage will be thrown at Adrian's face, as well as the Stitcher Supplier, which will mill Calvin another three cards, as well as the Pawn of Ulamog, giving Calvin two 0-1 Eldrazi spawns. Then Adrian's going to enter combat, throw his Galazeth at Aiden, dealing three commander damage, and then he's going to pass the turn. Round five, Guy's going to untap, draw, then he's going to throw his Toski at Adrian dealing one damage, triggering Toski, and drawing a card. He's then going to cast Scoot Swarm before dropping a basic island, which will trigger Scoot Swarm and just create a normal insect this time. He's then going to pass the turn. All right, a promise is a promise. After Calvin untaps and draws, he's going to tap three mana and sack both his spawns to cast Incarnation Technique, demonstrating and giving Aiden the copy like the promise from before. Aiden, off of his own demonstrate, will reveal a Cultivate, Beseech the Queen, Forest, Swamp, and a Sensei's Divining Top. None of them were creatures, so off of his Incarnation Technique, he's going to return Veto, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, back to his hand. Calvin's turn to Incarnation, and he's going to reveal a Beseech the Queen, Minister of Obligation, Renegade Reaper, a Skyclave Apparition, and an Ash Knot's Altar. After some deliberation, he's going to choose a Skyclave Apparition which will enter the battlefield and exile Guy's Toski. Then for the second incarnation technique, Calvin will reveal a Solemn Simulacrum, Exotic Orchard, Tainted Field, Swamp, and a Mind Stone. And this one will ultimately settle on the Solemn Simulacrum, which is going to get Calvin a basic Swamp. Holy moly. Good, good what demonstration of new cards, children. Jesus Christ. He was talking this card up. Well, I I, no, I think that card's good. I think like, for five mana, four, four five, five mana, five, that happened. Five yeah. fucking mana, you yeah. get two of them. You pick the player either yeah. politically or the one with the worst creatures, it's, and it doesn't target the creature in your graveyard. That's a shitload of fucking value, bro. Aiden's gonna untap, draw. Forced. Happens. Still having that mana issue. But you know, we got a Nisa who shakes the world. Yikes. Well, Ye that resolves, because I'm sure I'm tapped out. And he's going to tick up the Nisa, hoping to save it some health before his next turn. And then he's going to pass. Adrian's going to untap. He'll draw two because of the Howling Mine. It's for real, though. If Adrian's about to wipe the board between you and him, you can kill it. I found my island, dude. Because he'll wipe oh, you the board and you'll to. get a 4 4. <laughs> you don't have to. Dude. Boys, you just said the spell in your hand can't be cast right now. Combat, I can't even cast it with all the mana I would have. Aiden, this is taking three. Fine. Like, I understand the fear, though. <laughs> She's scary. Because I don't think we can stand that Scoot Swarm. No. But the Ob Agent's gone, so I can just get a Blast Miss Act. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if I can politic my way into getting that Nisa gone. But no, I'm, dog, I'm come interested on. in getting that Nisa gone. Come I, on, I gotta man. remove your Scoot Swarm to do it. Listen, but I can also get rid of the this and give you a 4 4 in return. How many things can you kill with the Shatter Skull? Two. I mean, with, this, with this board, we can get rid of the Nisa. Come on. No, no, no. If I attack, come on. He he blocks one. I get in for one attack, two. He's got two two twos. Or it doesn't block mine. Then. You don't need to do this. Hmm. Come on. It's dead on board. I'm gonna pass. Y'all don't need Wait, to do I this, though. <laughs> I'm gonna tap this for red. Then I'm going to tap this for red. Two colorless. Blue. I'm gonna try to expansion explosion for four. My target is gonna be Beto. What? Yeah. Man! This is oh, so hateful. Wow. We'll draw one, two, three, four herds. Put this in the bin. I'm gonna tap for two, losing one. How much man you got over there? A lot, dude. A lot. Every single Why one of my Why are you worried about this then? Fuck that. I'm gonna play. Even with I'm this, gonna play, I have less mana than his ass. I'll play Loyal Apprentice. Oh, okay. Fuck you guys. Yeah, now you can we can dedicate Literally. our interaction on Adrian and just kill the Nisa. You don't need death. to kill the Nisa. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Iden, it's okay. You served a valuable role in this game. You gave me an incarnation technique. You guys are awful. <laughs> <laughs> Round six, after Guy already untaps and draws, He's going to drop a basic forest, which is going to make a copy of Scoot Storm this time, and then he'll enter combat, but he'll only throw one creature at the Nisa, dealing one damage to her. He'll then pass the turn. Calvin's turn, he's going to untap, draw, and then move into combat. What do we got, Calvin? Enter combat. Yes, sir. Your, your commander's really good. 
Bro, I can barely cast them. You can absolutely cast them. And do what? Two at Nisa with my two cards. My, I do have a two one. For what if it's relevant. Do you want to block it? I think I might. Um, that would give guy a four. No, no, the four four is actually something I'm terrified of. Go to damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Nisa's dead. Dinko. Oh, you. I, I, I can't believe you. I, re I regret You're nothing. Dead to me. We don't know what's in your hand, man. Like, I. Maybe, maybe you got nothing. What are you talking? What are you talking about? What's what's that big one? I don't, what's that? Uh, oh wait, oh. what's this problem? Fuck I see you! Problem. You had it the whole time. The whole time, man. He was gonna eat us. No, I couldn't cast this. With Nisa, you could have. No, I couldn't. Those are, oh, that's are those not forests, bro. Those are a lot. Of oh, he doesn't have the black. He doesn't have the black. Well, On top of your deck, it's fine. Uh. After that, Calvin is gonna tap five mana in order to cast. What's that? It's, it's another one, guys. That's mine. It's a another fucking another one. one. Uh-uh. Oh, my fucking God. That's so much value. Dude, what am I going to bring back? <sighs> Callum will choose to demonstrate on Aiden once more, so Aiden's going to reveal a Rampant Growth, Priest of Forgotten Gods, Witherbloom Campus, Eternal Witness, and a Basic Forest. Aiden's going to choose the Eternal Witness to enter the battlefield, which will ETB trigger, target Aiden's Cultivate, and add the Cultivate to Aiden's hand. Then, before the second incarnation technique can resolve, Guy is going to cast Decisive Denial, decisively denying Calvin two incarnation techniques, so the copy gets countered. But then we move on to the original incarnation technique. Calvin's going to reveal a Viseraseer, a Tithe Taker, a Midnight Reaper, a Tesa Orzhov Scion, and a Rally the Ancestors. Calvin's going to end up taking the Midnight Reaper, putting it into play, and then he's gonna pass the turn. Aiden's gonna untap, draw, and he's gonna cast that Cultivate, searching his library for a Swamp and a Swamp, putting one into play with the Cultivate, and then playing the other one in his land for turn. Before Aiden can pass, Guy is gonna cast Eureka Moment, drawing him two cards, letting him drop a Rhymewood Falls, and triggering both his Scoot Swarm and his Scoot Swarm, making a Scoot Swarm and a Scoot Swarm. This is gonna end Aiden's turn. Adrian's turn, he's going to untap, draw two because of the Howling Mind, drop a Command Tower, he'll enter combat so the Loyal Apprentice will make a Thopter token, and he's going to throw combat damage at Guy, dealing another three Commander damage. Then he's going to tap his Howling Mind for red mana and pass the turn. Round 7, Guy is going to untap, draw, drop a Command Tower, and this is going to trigger Scoot Swarm, Scoot Swarm, Scoot Swarm, and Scoot Swarm. So he's going to make a Scute Swarm, a Scute Swarm, a Scute Swarm, and a Scute Swarm. Then... I'm going to tap four mana. Adrian, would you like to counter this spell? It's for counter this spell. Yo! I, tight, tight. <laughs> I'm going to try to. <laughs> I'm going to tap for uh, one. I love tapping my fucking, fucking four mana. Two, three. That's blue. This is not blue. This is blue. Five. I'm going to try to cast Confirm Suspicions. Counter, I'll make three clues. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Okay. Wow, that's really good. Adrian will make three clue tokens, and then Guy is going to throw all his creature tokens that can attack, holding behind the original Scoot Swarm, at Calvin. Calvin won't block, so he'll take all the damage, losing four life and ending Guy's turn. <laughs> After Calvin untaps and draws, he's going to cast a Savine's Reclamation, targeting the Ashnod's altar in his graveyard. In response, Adrian's going to crack just one clue token. Don't mind the mistap mana that does get corrected a little later in this same turn, and he's going to draw one card. Then the Savine's Reclamation will resolve, putting Ashnod's altar into play. Then Calvin is going to sacrifice his Skyclave Apparition to the Ashnod's altar, adding two colorless mana to his mana pool, triggering the Skyclave Apparition, and triggering his own Midnight Reaper. But with those triggers on the stack, Adrian is going to cast Hole Breacher. Again, don't mind the incorrect mana. This is the first game we played with Galazeth Prismari. We didn't quite intuitively know that the mana generated from Galazeth's mana rocks couldn't be used on artifact abilities, particularly clue tokens. This is corrected later in the same turn. Don't worry. In response to the Hole Breacher, Calvin will activate Ashnod's altar again, sacrificing the Solemn Simulacrum, triggering it and the Midnight Reaper so that he can sneak two draws past the Hole Breacher and then everything resolves as it should. Skyclave giving Guy a 4-4, and Holbridge taking the draw for a treasure token. 
Then Calvin's gonna flash back Savine's reclamation, targeting Skyclave Apparition and Pawn of Ulamog. This resolves, they'll enter the battlefield, and Skyclave will trigger, exiling Adrian's Albridger. Albridger is... Then Calvin's gonna sacrifice the Skyclave Apparition to the Ash Knight's altar, giving himself two colorless mana, giving Adrian a 3-3, giving himself a 0-1 Eldrazi spawn, and triggering the Midnight Reaper, drawing a card and losing a life. Then Calvin will sacrifice the Pawn of Ulamog, getting much of the same effect with another spawn, another draw, and two more colorless mana. Then Calvin will tap his lands and use his Ashnod's mana to cast Command the Dreadhorde. Training Vito Thorn of the Dusk Road, Essence Warden, Blood Artist, Lodmar Elves, Rishkar, Pima Renegade, Pawn of Ulamog, Ministrant of Obligation, Tesa Ors of Scion, Solemn Simulacrum, T Taker, Stitcher Supplier, and Viserys Seer. So first, we will resolve Command the Dreadhorde for... All right, so Essence Warden is going to see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 creatures enter the battlefield. You'll gain 11 life. I'm going to gain 11 life. That's going to trigger Veto, and you'll be able to shoot someone for 11. I'm going to shoot someone for 11. Who do I want to shoot for 11? Yeah, you're the spookiest. We are going to resolve our other ETB triggers, by yeah. the way. First up, we're going to start with this guy. Solemn Simulacrum, I'm gonna get a basic plan. Mm -hmm. Nice. Every single time. Stitcher Supplier, I'm gonna mill three. One, two, three. And then this guy, I'm gonna put a plus one plus one counter on him. Mm -hmm. And I am going to put a plus one plus one counter at yeah, him. All right. The first thing I'm going to do with the Ash Nodes Altar, I am going to sacrifice the Ministrant of Obligation in order to add two mana to my mana pool. Okay. This is gonna cause some death triggers. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go from the Blood Artist first. Adrian, can you lose one? Lose one. I'm gonna gain one. Vito, can you lose one? I will lose one. Cool. Now we're going to move over to the Midnight Reaper trigger. I'm gonna lose a life and I'm gonna draw a card. Mm -hmm. Then we are going to move to the Pawn of Ulamog trigger. I am going to make- A Scion. A Scion. Essence Warren's gonna trigger it. I'm gonna gain a life. Can you lose a life? Lose a life. Thank you. Administrative Obligation is going to finish resolving, which is going to get me two 1-1 one, one <coughs> white and black spirits. I'm being very deliberate about that. They okay. enter the battlefield. I'm going to gain two life. And then I lose two life. And that is the end of all of that. Move on to the next. I would like to sacrifice Stitcher Supplier. Okay. okay? So Stitcher Supplier nice. is going to be sacrificed in order to add two to my mana pool. I'm going to go up like this. Uh, and that's gonna trigger this guy, this guy, and this guy, like before. And this girl. Very important. And then I'm going to finish resolving the Ministrant of Obligation. Now they finish entering the battlefield. I see. Yeah. These enter the battlefield. Beep beep. Moving on. We are going to sacrifice Solemn Simulacrum. Yes. Solemn Simulacrum is gonna be sacrificed in order to add two right here. It's gonna go over here. It has a death trigger. Midnight Reaper has a death trigger. Blood Artist has a death trigger. Pawn of Ulamog has a death trigger. Uh, Blood Artist, beep beep. Uh, right now, while I'm thinking about it, I'd like to foretell. Sure. Okay. I am going to, this guy. No, wait, that's, that's gonna give that guy mana. I can't sacrifice him. Which means I'm gonna sacrifice the Viserys here. Okay? To the Ashnod's altar. Okay. In order to give it two mana, which is gonna trigger the Blood Artist, trigger the Pawn, and trigger the Min Midnight Reaper. Okay. Blood Artist, drain. You. Beep. Beep. Yeah, no, stop. Prismari is centered. My so you're going for him next, gone. right? Hmm? You're going for him next? I'm going for him can, next. Can I go to the bathroom? Go to the bathroom. That was from the Blood Artist. Uh, Correct. Right? Yep. So now I drain you off the veto. Yep. We are going to sacrifice the Landmore Elf. I was just trying to figure out what was Trigger Blood Artist, Pawn, and Midnight Reaper. First the Blood Artist, I drain. Yeah, fuck it. We will sacrifice the Tithe Taker. All right? Which has a bunch of triggers. Go game one. So do you have enough to kill all of us? I I haven't I have not dug into there yet. Alright. I am trying my damn getting there. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sacrifice the pawn of Ulamog. Ooh, okay. Um 
which does trigger off itself, as well as the Blood Artist, as well yeah. as the Midnight Reaper. Yeah. So Blood Artist. Well, the first thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna sacrifice these three white creatures to Tesa to exile Eternal Witness. They are also black creatures. So I am going to trigger Tesa, and I'm going to get three white spirits. They will all enter the battlefield. Essence Warren is gonna trigger three times, and Vito is gonna poop, point it here. Move to resolve, Tesa, exile eternal witness. Uh, sacrifice Rishkar. Uh, only blood ours and Midnight Reaper. Uh, we are gonna sacrifice three white creatures in order to exile Scoot Storm. Uh, these all die, so. Then I would like to sacrifice uh, three white creatures mm -hmm. in order to exile this 4-4. Four four. Uh, Blood Artist Trigger. Top five um, command Red Horde myself. So go <laughs> one, uh -huh. two, three. Yep. Blood Artist Triggers. Move to my end step. And I will discard a fuck ton of lands and a Doom Traveler. I'm do your worst. Alright. Hold my beer. I'm waiting. Yeah, this deck. Alright, I guess we have to pass it to you. Right? We're gonna play our dude. Yep. Right? Yeah, we're gonna play our dude. Carry around all the way. Right. Pass and get a pest on your upkeep? You do. Ah. They're right next to you. Woo. Get your pest. Cool. Woo! Drop. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, clean it up, my man. I just this is like my commander. <laughs> Grand Abolisher. Ooh! Do you have any effects? No! <laughs> okay. Do you have Command the Dreadhorde in your deck, Aiden? Yes. I'm pretty sure. No, I definitely do. I definitely do. No, wait, are you? Prayer's Grasp. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh my yeah. god. That's cool. <laughs> That's really good. I mean, you have to do those shots. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh yeah. Aiden, how did you shuffle? How did you do it? Aiden, this is not a vibe. Oh, this is a vibe. This is giving me bad, bad cognitive dissonance here. Let me, I'll start fixing this. Yeah, all right, thank you, guy. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, you. He just likes watching. <laughs> He's like watching us do it. Mm, my leg is crappy. Wow. Jesus Christ. You good? You, you do it? My vibe Two hour game. game. I have corrected the error from that very first taste of game I ever played. You he it. was pretty organized there. So, let's talk about it. In my last video, I said that I really wanted to focus on like the lessons that we can take away from a, our gameplay video today, as opposed to doing the most to least impactful, a setup that the commons don't like anymore, and you know, Adrian, but let's, what can we learn from today's video? And let's try and get a lesson from everyone's corner. To start, if we looked at Adrian's corner, the Galazeth deck, it was, it, it did the thing. I, I don't know if I can include all of the audio talking about it, but this was the very first game. This was the very first game we all played our particular decks, our partic these particular dragons with each other. And the entire time, Adrian, while gushing about the deck and doing his spell slitting nonsense, was talking about, man, I want to upgrade this stack so badly. This video, this game was like a couple weeks ago. Now you know. Now, I, if you watched yesterday's stream, I'm sure you know. There's stacks Galazeth now. Adrian loves the commander because it's just, it's so consistent and it's so powerful and it turns, it, it opens up so many interesting strategies, I suppose. Unique ones in the commander landscape besides perhaps Urza who's just busted. I, I, I don't know what lesson there is to take away from Galazeth besides that Galazeth is very good and I still think is the best of the five dragons introduced in this set, so. Move it on. Guys, Quandrix deck performed the same, I think, more or less. We've of all the games we played, sometimes it sputters out, sometimes it's very strong, but it's its range of performance is pretty tightly packed. And today we saw a Scoot Swarm potentially overrun the board. I'm really excited for the first gameplay video that we put on the channel where Scoot Swarm actually does the thing because I love that card. Unfortunately, guy with this deck just couldn't quite get there. But he was still powerful. He was still threatening. And Adrian was spending a lot of time worrying about Guy just overrunning the board. Pick up your Scoot Storm today. Moving from there, if I were to look at Aiden's side of the board, Aiden, the player that won the big Strixhaven video, did a lot of nothing. I did give him a free spell twice with my incarnation technique and his incarnation technique, but 
the, the rest of the board was so far ahead that they were able to put down any advantage that Aiden was able to put up. In particular, that Nisa probably would have been very good if it, the table actually wheeled to him, but we weren't going to let the Nisa live. That's the problem with Planeswalkers, kids. Finally, what lesson can we learn from the Shadrix player, besides that graveyard shenanigans are fun and that opposition agents are very strong when you can open with a scheming symmetry? The lesson I want you to take away from this video, the, th the thing I want to burn into your brain. Incarnation technique is fucked. Resilient to counter magic, resilient to graveyard hate. Re rest in peace uh, destroys it, but anything like scavenging ooze and Tormod's crypt can't actually fully stop the incarnation technique the way it's worded. It's just, it's just raw value. It's just pure value. I don't know if it was in this particular recording session or another stream sometime later, but I've had a game where I've cast an incarnation technique and I demonstrated with Adrian's deck, who is a controlled deck with very little graveyard shenanigans or very little creatures. So he just milled some good cards and did nothing. And I get two copies of the spell. It, it's a very good card. It's the best demonstrate card from the cycle and probably one of the best spells, if not my personal pick for best spell from the Strixhaven set. Spell being instant or sorcery, don't, don't at me. Again, if there's a lesson that I want you to take away from today's gameplay video, is that you should buy an incarnation technique today. It's nuts. Also Savine's Reclamation, but Savine's Reclamation comes from the pre-con with uh, Dockside Extortionist, and I don't understand why it could be $5 and sold out everywhere. But that's all I have for you today. That's all I have time for today because I'm late for a family event. If you like today's gameplay video, leave a comment down below and hit that like and subscribe button. If you like the content and the stuff, do the thing. There was a stream yesterday. Did you know we stream on Sundays? There's the setup. If, um... If you want to do another call to action, you just, you, you, Calvin, you just got to get like a script or something, or you put like a preset or whatever, put on your sunglasses, look at the camera, do a little cool little pose. I got a beard now. Because I'm, I'm Adrian Ega Calvin. When really he should be saying, hello. Can't actually fully stop trigger.